Today, I'm going to show you how to build your very own website with no coding necessary using AI tools like ChatGPT and Stable Diffusion. Let's jump right into it. Over the past few months, a number of amazing tools have come from the AI community to help boost your productivity and your creativity, opening up even the most complex tasks like building a website to just about everyone. And in order to illustrate how powerful some of these tools are, I figured what better way than to start our very own blog using nothing more than Stable Diffusion and ChatGPT. Now in order to kick this off, we're going to be using Invoke AI. This is a Stable Diffusion tool that can be run locally on your own Windows PC or Mac with an M1 processor. You can of course follow this along and you can use other online cloud-based tools like Midjourney for example. You just might have to modify some of your prompts. Now, I thought it'd be interesting to build a car related blog because I'm kind of a car guy and I thought that would be pretty exciting. I will make a couple of notes here. I am going to load a couple of custom models into Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion, as you know, is trained off of thousands of different images from across the web, and you can get a different design aesthetic specific to your use cases by using training sets that were trained on the types of images that you're looking for. In this case, I'm going to go to Hugging Face, and I did a search for website design. I ended up coming to Jacob Para who happens to have a Stable Diffusion checkpoint file that was trained on website design files. So you can come over here and you go to the file inversions and you'll see this test3.checkpoint. You can click on that file and you'll simply click download. Once you've downloaded that file, and it's a large file, all checkpoint files are typically around two to three gigabytes in size, we can go back over to Invoke AI. And we'll come up here to the model manager, we'll click add new, add checkpoint soft safe tensor model. We've already given it a path to our downloads directory. This is where I've been storing my models. We'll click scan again, and this will have in the list the checkpoint model that we just downloaded. Select that, click add selected, and then now you can load that in the list. This shows all of the models that are installed in your system and available to load. With that out of the way, let's write our first prompt. We're going to start off pretty simple. We're going to say beautiful website about cars. Obviously not very detailed, and we'll just see what it comes back with directionally. Here we are. These are actually fairly impressive right off the bat, even without any modifications to our prompt. This must be that training data that came from that new model that we loaded up. So now what we can do is we can modify this slightly, and we'll give it some modifiers. So we'll say UX... UI, so user experience, user interface, UX slash UI. So it's going to tell it to focus a little bit more on those design elements, the actual user experience. All right, not much different, but you can see it has a little bit more emphasis on maybe the mobile user experience by showing the mobile version and a desktop version. I don't think we really need those additional pieces in the prompt though, in order to get what we're after. Now, I do want to make this a little bit more specific in that I want a beautiful website about the Tesla... Model S. It shows the Model S because, well, it's a fun car. And anytime I can blend Tesla with my other hobbies, I'm going to jump into it. All right. So we've definitely gotten more specific. It's showing images that resemble the Tesla Model S, but we've lost a little bit about that website feel. So we're going to go beautiful website about cars featuring the Tesla Model S. And then we're going to bring back the UX. UI, UX, UI elements. And I think what that's going to do is shape the prompt so that it's a little bit more focused on that website aesthetic rather than just the images of the car. But we'll see. There we go. That's more like it. So we've got a few hero images. We've got a couple of decent website layouts. This looks like it could be the actual Tesla website. It almost looks like it has the logo up there in the upper left. And so I think I like this one the most. It's really well laid out and simple, easy to use for a blog. So what we can do is we can enhance this photo. So we can go up here to the upper left hand of the menu and say send to image to image. What that's going to do is copy over the exact image that we just had along with the prompt that was used. And now we can run upscaling on this to increase the resolution. Let's go ahead and do that now. And we'll set the number of images to one because we don't need any more than that. And there we go. This is our increased resolution version of the website. Now this gives you a nice layout and it gives you an idea of what we could actually create with this, but it isn't quite ready for production, you could say. It's still quite pixelated and not quite high enough quality. But what we can do 
is we can use that as inspiration. So we'll go ahead and save that image, and then we'll go back to our text to image prompt. And now we'll start actually crafting this a little bit better. So we know that we need this kind of large scale hero image at the top of a Tesla Model S. So what we'll do is we'll say, I want a hyper realistic photo of a Tesla Model S driving down a road for use on a website. And the one thing we will change here, since this is for use on a website, it's going to need a little bit wider aspect ratio. So we'll try 512 by 1024 and see if that gives us the aspect ratio that we're looking for. And we'll bump the number of images up to four. And there we go. Let's see what we came back with. Obviously, this one won't work. It has two Tesla Model S's in it. This one's not bad. It's interesting. This has the newer style headlights, but it has the old original Tesla Model S grill. I'm not a huge fan of that. Same with this one. I actually quite like this one. It has a nice centered look to it. It looks like the type of image that you'd find in a car commercial. So what we're going to do is, again, send this one to image to image, where we're going to go ahead and upscale it so that we can use it later. I'm going to go with 4x upscaling. We'll drop this down to a single image, and we'll press invoke. Let's take a look at this image and see the details. And that's actually quite nice. So we'll go ahead and save this image as well. Click on download. So now we're happy with the images and the overall website direction. Let's jump over to ChatGPT and have it help us fill in some of the details. And the first thing we'll ask is provide me with the specs for the Tesla Model S in table format. And ChatGPT is great. It looks like it printed out all the specs for us. Now there are a couple of details in here that I know are incorrect. There is no 120 kilowatt hour battery pack. And the charging is actually up to 250 kilowatt fast charging, depending on the model. These are minor details and it gave us not only the range and all the other basic specs of the vehicle, but it gave us a good starting place for when we start filling out details on the website. Now, the next thing we're going to do here is have it write 10 blog titles about the Tesla Model S. We are going to need a blog title in order to get this going. And so we've getting back some, the future of luxury, a closer look at the Tesla Model S. I like that one. Five reasons why the Model S is the best electric car in the market. That sounds more like a blog post than a blog title. Sustainable luxury inside the Tesla Model S. So we might be able to rework some of these to make them more usable as an actual blog title. And then I'm going to ask ChatGPT to change these into domain names or website names. We'll see what that comes back with. Future Lux Tesla, Tesla Model S Review HQ. These are actually pretty good. Now, you would need to go through a place like GoDaddy, figure out if any of these domain names are available, but it can really help spark interesting ideas when you come to this part of building a website. All right, from here, we're going to jump on over to Wix because I did mention this is a no-code website. There are a number of different free online editors out there. This is just one that's simple and easily accessible by just about anyone. So we're gonna go in here and after we've signed up for a free account, we're gonna create a new site. Now, the first thing it's gonna do is ask you what type of site you're creating. We're gonna create a blog. We're gonna click next. What would you like to call your website? So we'll jump back over to ChatGPT. I actually quite liked the future of luxury and then maybe we can call it Tesla Model S. So future of luxury, Tesla Model S. Now, I don't need any other features built in, but of course, you can add any additional pages and features that you'd like. For now, I just want a basic blog, and I want to go to a template to begin with. Now, we did get some design inspiration back from Stable Diffusion, so we can jump back there and take a look. This was sort of the design aesthetic that we were going for. So let's see if we can find something that resembles that as a starting place. Actually, maybe something like this. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on edit. And that's going to create the editor that's going to set this up so that we can start jumping in and actually making some modifications to the site. Perfect. So what we're going to do is take this top section here. We're going to go to edit and we'll see that it already has a background. Now we're going to click on change. We're going to select image. And we're going to find that image of the Model S that we had Stable Diffusion create for us. Once we've selected that, It'll take just a minute to upload. And then we simply go to change background. And we can see that the image of the car is a little bit cut off. So we can either adjust the aspect ratio of the car, or we can simply drag this down slightly. So we've got it taking up a little bit more space. 
We've also got this talking business section here. I'm gonna change this to say Tesla Model S. And then what was it over here? It was the future of luxury. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. The future of luxury. There, that's already coming along quite nicely. We'll zoom out a little bit so we can see everything else. And then let's say we wanted to add a section here. So you can go to add elements and you can go through a whole list of things that you can add here, whether it's buttons, images, text, we can go ahead and go to paragraph and we'll just select a style and we can add that right here to the body. We can come back to chat GPT and we can say, write a quick summary of why the Tesla Model S is such an amazing car. The Tesla Model S is an amazing car for several reasons. Firstly, it's an all-electric vehicle that produces zero emissions, making it eco-friendly and sustainable. It talks about the performance, lightning-fast acceleration, a number of key features that we would want to touch on. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to go back to the website editor. We're just going to select all this text and paste this in. And we're going to expand this out, and we can drag this up to where we want it. And we can also edit the text. So we can edit the size, for example. So make this a little bit bigger. That's way too big. We don't want this as a heading. We want this as a paragraph. There we go. Now we can also come back over here and we can add a heading, which I suggest doing for SEO purposes. And for that heading, we can go ahead and just select why the Tesla Model S is such an amazing car. We're gonna edit this and shrink it down until it fits on a single line. Now what if we needed more images for our website? We could go back to Stable Diffusion we could jump back into the editor. We'll go to text to image. We'll jump open our prompt and we can change this. We can take out driving down the road for use on a website. We can change the height and width. Let's say we want something with a square aspect ratio so that we can use it in some of these sort of underlying images. And actually, I wouldn't say a square aspect ratio. I'd say that's closer to, we'll say like a 768 by 512. So we'll go ahead and bump this up to four images. We'll turn off upscaling, we'll press invoke, and we'll see what we get back here. All right, let's take a look at what it came back with. Oh, this is nice. This is actually a refreshed Tesla Model S. It's before the 2022 model because it does still have the horizontal lines over here in the grill. They did away with those in the plaid refresh. We can take a look at a couple of these others. This actually looks like it could be a refresh with that rear diffuser. I love that image. So we're actually going to up here to download image and we'll grab a couple of these. And of course you can upscale these again, go back to the website editor. And then the cool thing here is you can go to add elements. Maybe we'll add this slider gallery. Just drop that in. Bring that down here. And then when we double click that, it's gonna come up with a way for you to add images. Now we can go ahead and get rid of the images that it has in here. Obviously we wanna use our own. And this is where you can start dropping in some of those stable diffusion images to just sort of fill in the gallery. So go to add, upload media, upload from computer, and we'll just select a couple of these here. Actually, we won't select that last one. We'll select the two images by pressing shift click, and then we'll add to gallery. Click on done. And you can see the gallery has actually updated. Now at this point, we can go ahead and take a look at the website. We can click on publish. You can either get a free Wix domain or connect your own domain. We'll go ahead and save with the free Wix domain. Your site is saved and we'll click on preview. All right, and here we are. So we've got our hero image. We've got the Tesla Model S, future of luxury. We've got our blurb. Obviously there are some issues with this area down here. So we'd go back and refine and edit those. We also have our gallery down here, which is shaping up. Now, of course, from here, you can go back and you can continue editing the website, really perfecting the design, making sure it's mobile responsive and looks exactly the way you want it to. One of the other really cool things you can do is use ChatGPT to actually fill in some content. So if you were creating this blog, you could come back to ChatGPT and say, write 10 blog topic ideas about the Tesla Model S. Now you have some amazing blog topic ideas. Exploring the Model S, a comprehensive review, the pros and cons of owning a Model S. This is an interesting one. So let's take this and say, write a blog outline for a blog post titled, and ChatGPT is actually writing our entire outline for the blog post, complete with a list of pros and cons. 
Now you could go a step further and you could say, write the actual blog post. And now it's actually writing the blog post based on all the information that it has from the context above it. From here, you could go back to stable diffusion and have it generate an image that you can use along with this blog post. And then you can jump right back into your website and actually post this blog post. I do recommend going back through and doing a little bit of editing on this, making sure that the information that it's providing is actually true and accurate. Other than that, you can see it generates quite a bit of text and content here, and it can really help you get on your way quickly. Honestly, with all the AI productivity tools we have at our fingertips, there's no excuse for not starting your own website or building your own business online with some of these free tools. Now be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. That really helps me out and it tells YouTube that I'm doing a good job. If you have any questions about any of these tools or tips, be sure to join my Discord community. We've got an active community of other AI enthusiasts that are always trying to help each other out. Otherwise, my name is Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech, and we'll see you next time. Thank you all so much.